Hi there everyone, my name is Prerak Juthani. I am an MD MBA student here at Yale, and today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about the USMLE step one going pass fail. And this was news that was released uh, a bit earlier this year, but the point is that recently there was an article published in JAMA, and I wanna go over that article because it discusses how program directors are gonna view this change in the step one grading system. For those of you who are new to my channel or maybe are just new med students in general, you may know that prior to this year, it took USMLE Step 1, USMLE Step 2 CK, and USMLE Step 2 CS, and you had to pass all three of those to ultimately uh, get into uh, residency as an MD student. However, recently in 2020 to 2021, Step 2 CS has now been canceled. So now no one actually takes step two CS. It, it, it's not even an exam anymore. And the other thing is step one, which used to be on a numerical scale out of 300 is now going to be a like bi, uh, binocular uh, yes or no pass or fail system. So instead of getting a three uh, number score, individuals taking step one will now just know whether they passed or they failed, but there is no numerical score. So what that leaves is only step 2 CK and this is also a numerically scored exam and that is now the only one that will be a uh, numerical score. And so the question is how is this going to impact individuals who are applying into residency? If you are a first, second, third or even fourth year medical student uh, in the next year or so, this is going to impact you, especially if you took the step one that is pass fail, which will be starting in, I believe, January of 2022. So what this study did, and you actually will find this study in the link below, you will see that they actually sent out a survey to program directors across the country. Program directors are individuals at several hospitals across the nation that are responsible for recruiting uh, future trainees uh, into the specialty that they are a program director of. So for example, the program director at Yale for internal medicine will recruit individuals who apply into internal medicine from across the country at Yale's program. And he will then pick who he wants uh, to be at Yale. And the same thing can be said for the program director of urology at Yale, the program director of um, trans or program director of surgery at Hopkins. They, these are individuals who are across the nation and there's a lot of them. Now let's talk a bit about how this study actually went down. The way they did this is that the authors of this study manually uh, sent this survey out to 1,600 program directors of more than 5,000. So you'll see that 1,600 program directors across all specialties such as urology, uh, internal medicine, psychiatry, and on almost every one of those specialties, they got more than 50% of the program directors in those specialties, except for internal medicine and family medicine, just because there tend to be a lot of programs with those. They sent these, uh, essentially a query out to 1600 program directors and asked them multiple questions. And I'm going to now summarize their findings. And after I summarize them with words, I will show you the figures so you can make sense of the data. And before I jump too much into the data, it's important to realize that 78% of program directors used to say that they cited uh, step one as a very important metric to get into residency, as well as 70% of PDs mentioning step two CK was important and 51% mentioning that step two CS was important. But it's interesting because as I told you, step one is no longer a numerical score and step two CS is no longer even existent. So that's kind of why it's important to understand that uh, we now have to recalibrate. And that's, that's the whole point of this. So as I told you, the survey is sent out to 1,600 total PDs. So you can see here of those 1,600 individuals they surveyed, about 891 responded. And so that's a 55.7% response rate and 97.2% uh, of those responses were included in the analysis. And now I'm gonna go over some of the big findings. So many program directors reported that they're gonna place a greater emphasis on tiered clerkship grades. So clerkships are what happened in your third year, usually in medical school after you've finished two years of preclinical studying. And in the clerkship, you are actually in the hospital in the various specialties. So you have a psychiatry clerkship, you have a surgery clerkship, you have a neurology clerkship, you have an internal medicine clerkship, and you actually get grades in each of those. And those grades are usually on a curve where some level of the class gets honors, some level of the class gets a pass, some level of the class gets a high pass. Um, and so 87.7% of program directors said that they're going to place a greater, greater emphasis on those grades since step one is now pass fail. 83.4% also said that they're going to place a greater emphasis 
on the step 2 CK exam because that is now the only exam that's still um, numerical. And then another thing that individuals may know, and if you don't know this yet, I'm glad to be the first one to tell you, when you're doing your clerkships, at the end of each clerkship in your rotation, you usually take what's called an NBME shelf exam. It's a subject exam. So when you're in psychiatry, you will take your MBME uh, psychiatry exam. When you're in internal medicine, you take an internal medicine exam. You get a score on that exam, and, um, and usually that score influences the grade you get. So you'll see that program directors are mentioning that they might place an emphasis on those um, subject exams. Uh, and then the other thing they said that they would look at is narrative assessments. So usually when you have your clerkship, you get graded by the individuals you're around and they tell you like prereq was kind of an asshole, prereq was this, prereq was that, and they actually provide feedback to you. That feedback is uh, is summarized in the letters that you often send out to residency and so PDs are saying they're going to look at that. They also said that they're going to look at your sub-internship evaluation and uh, away rotations. So the um, sub-internship is a rotation you'll do after your third year in the specialty you're interested in. And the away rotation tends to be rotations you do at institutions that you're interested in matching at, as well as reference letters, which are essentially re letters of recommendation. Um, the other thing that's mentioned here is that across specialties, many PDs will consider medical school prestige, which again may not have been that big of a deal, but it is becoming a bigger deal now, uh, where you know obviously going to Harvard is going to look entirely different than uh, not going to Harvard. Uh, leadership experience and academic awards slash honor society memberships. So let me now just summarize all of this with the images in the paper. You can see that they surveyed a lot of uh, individuals across pretty much every specialty that exists. Um, and of course the response rate is going to be different, but they did survey a large number of samples. And um, here's what I kind of wanted to mostly show, that there is this change that you are seeing where individuals are going to be valuing NBME scores, Step 2 CK, reference letters, as well as medical school prestige a lot more heavily than um, maybe they were in the past. And so this is just something that I wanted to make sure you understood. And specifically notice that in this case, the question that's asked is program directors' perspectives on which application elements they will emphasize following the discontinuation of step two clinical skills, step two CS, and pass fail scoring of step one. And you'll see that 863, 47, almost 87% said that they're going to um, agree slash strongly agree that they're going to emphasize uh, clerkship grades. Uh, almost uh, similarly, almost 80% said that they're going to uh, uh, emphasize the clerkship narrative. And you can kind of make of this image what you will. But I do want to have some broad takeaways for everyone watching this video that are again taken directly from the paper, which is linked in the description. But it says that our findings suggest that PDs, program directors, will consider evaluations of clinical core rotations uh, as even more important moving forward, as well as narrative assessments and sub-internship evaluations. Um, even though the step one was made pass-fail to decrease stress on medical students, the individuals who wrote this paper think that there's still going to be a lot of emphasis placed on NBME exams as well as Step 2 CK. So we don't actually know how big of an impact this is going to make in terms of mental health, but you know, fingers crossed that it does. Um, I hope this video was helpful for all of you. I personally found this figure very insightful just to kind of show you the different things that are part of the residency application and what may change in emphasis moving forward. So if you did like this video, please subscribe. Uh, shoot me a nice little follow, a like. Uh, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you all so much, and definitely just comment below uh, if there's certain things that you were confused about, and I'm happy to clarify them. Thanks for watching. Peace.